Okay, so this next module we're going to look at the Bombardier uh, website and how to access all the maintenance manuals and I'll also show you a few other bits and pieces um, within the Bombardier website, some of which are kind of hidden away a little bit so it's, it's worth going through this, um, especially when it comes to troubleshooting and there's some, also some other information as well that I just want to highlight to you. So we'll head over now to the PowerPoint presentation and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is access the um, Bombardier website uh, and type in your credentials and log in and it will take you to this page right here. Now down the left hand side of the screen you'll see some icons, so at the moment the house is highlighted for the home page and then underneath that there's a picture of a book. If you click on the book it it, the next step will be to select um, technical publications so you then click on that okay so here we are you click on the tech pubs where well, you click on the library book it will then bring down a sort of sub menu tech pub so you click on tech pubs once you've clicked on tech pubs you just need to scroll down the page just a little bit until this part of the picture comes into view where it says smart pubs online manuals from the drop down menu choose your aircraft now if you're a service center you'll probably have a whole bunch of aircraft there the ones that you tend to look after because you've got the subscription for all of those aircraft obviously if you've only got one aircraft there'll only be one option but you so you choose from the drop down menu the aircraft that you want to look at and then you've got a choice of between flight manuals or maintenance manuals. So the first thing we're going to look at is the maintenance manuals. So you click on maintenance and that will take you to the maintenance manuals area. When you get to the maintenance manual area, this is what it initially looks like. Um, so on the right hand side on the right hand side of the screen, you've got a couple of tabs. It says bulletin board. This is the one that it defaults to. It's just some basic headlines stroke bulletin board some useful information or sometimes not so useful information um, what you really need to do is actually click the other tab where it says list of maintenance uh, list of available manuals um, just over on the left hand side of the screen uh, where it says welcome to smart plugs uh, smart pubs just underneath that you'll see you've got a Java download and a PDF viewer download um, now the maintenance manuals are in PDF format, so you'll need some sort of PDF uh, viewer for that. If you haven't got one already, you can download it from here. The Java download is needed to access the wiring manuals. Um, they're not in PDF, they're in a Java format, so you'll need the Java reader for that. And the other thing with the wiring manuals, the wiring manuals and the Java thing is not supported by Chrome, so you'll need to use another uh, Internet Explorer other than Chrome. It does um, um, it does tell you that when you access the wiring manuals section, which we'll come to later on. It tells you what um, Internet Explorers are compatible, but there are some limited. You've got some limitations when it comes to. Uh, Internet Explorers and accessing the wiring manuals. Maintenance manuals though is fine, it's, they're just plain old bog standard PDF. So when you click on the list of available manuals tab, it will open up this page for you where you've got a list of all your manuals that you've got at your disposal. So Aircraft Illustrated Parts, uh, the Aircraft Maintenance Manual Part 2, Ground Handling Servicing, so on and so forth. Now the maintenance manual AMM is actually split up into two sections, section one or part one and part two. Part one is a system description section. Part two is your bread and butter really. This is all your removals, installations, etc, etc. So that would be your kind of, when you get out in the real world, that's the kind of thing you'll be do, accessing all the time. Um, plus of course the uh, aircraft illustrated parts. So all you simply do then is you choose which manual you want to view and click on it. So when you click on it, the manual that you want, um, it will then take you into this uh, area here where down the left hand side of the column of the page, you've got a list of all your um, 
manuals within that manual. So we're in the AMM now, the AMM part um, uh, two in actual fact. So the AMM part two is then broken down into all these subchapters by ATA section. And then you just choose which section you want using the um, folders there, selecting which folder you want, and then it takes you down and eventually choose which section you want. Click on it and it will open up in the in the um, right hand part of the screen the PDF document which you can view, you can download it, you can print it from here. So what I want to mention to you now is something called Smart Fix Plus. Now one of my criticisms of Bombardia and the manuals is they there is no troubleshooting manual at all. Some of the AMM part term um, two subjects or or chapters have a troubleshooting area within them in the page 101 series of pages within the individual um, uh, uh, chapters but it's very very scanty to the point of virtually being non-existent so there's literally no troubleshooting manual so there is help at hand in something called smart fix plus and I'll show you how to access it in a minute. It's done through the normal Bombardier website through your login. Um, uh, but it is a really useful uh, platform. So I'll show you how to log, it, uh, log into it on the next slide. So to access the Smart Fix Plus, what you do before, if you take a couple of steps back actually, if you remember when we accessed the maintenance manuals we went down to the picture of the book and we clicked on it and we selected tech pubs a bit further down that list the second icon up from the bottom just above the question mark you click on that and scroll down the page a bit until you come to this area where it says smart fix plus again you choose your aircraft and then you click launch so once you click launch, it takes you to this page within the SmartFix sort of sub-portal of the website. <clears throat> so at the top of the screen, you can see some tabs. It's got system description, troubleshooting, locator, operations, and useful links. Now the system description section is pretty much exact copy of the normal system description manual i.e. the AMM part one which you access through the technical library or the technical pubs area. The difference is that the system description section here in the SmartFix Plus area, the text is the same but the pictures are much better including photographs and colour pictures, colour schematics. So you'll find the quality of the, the presentation material much much better here. But the, the key thing is, and the very useful thing about SmartFix Plus is the troubleshooting section. So if you click the troubleshooting tab, it will take you to the next page, which is here. So here we got the troubleshooting section. So we've got, we can troubleshoot by ATA number, which is where we are showing you right now. So just choose your ATA. You can troubleshoot by message color. You can troubleshoot by observed faults. You can troubleshoot by MDC, which is Maintenance Diagnostic Computer Message. And there is also some troubleshooting tips. So you go into this area here, and this is the nearest equivalent thing that Bombardia have to, the, to a troubleshooting manual. Okay, um, so it's just you won't find a troubleshooting manual in the, in the list of you know, normal manuals. You have to go into SmartFix Plus. We'll look at the troubleshooting side of things in more detail when we go through the MDC system or the CMC system. The next book I want to talk about is the Configuration De Deviation List, or CDL. Um, this is tucked away and hidden amongst all various manuals, and I'll show you how to access it in a minute. In a minute. The configuration deviation list is kind of like an MEL, but an MEL is equipment, minimum equipment, the emphasis being on the word equipment, 
the configuration list is set out in a similar way, but it is not related to equipment as such. It's, it's more related to configuration of the aircraft. So, for example, if you if you uh, if there's some sort of issue and you need to fly the aircraft with the landing gear down, you know, to get it home from somewhere and the, the landing gear's down. It gives you information about you know what restrictions are there in place if you have to fly with the gear down, etc., etc. And uh, other things like static wicks. You've got static wicks on the aeroplane. You're allowed to have some missing. How many are you allowed to have missing? You won't find that in the MEL. You'll find that information in the CDL. So I'll show you how to access it in a minute because it's kind of buried in amongst all the manuals and be quite hard to find unless you knew um, and but also the other thing in there there's some information in there that may well catch you out if you're not careful relating to the configuration of the aircraft and we're, we're going to sh I'll show you some uh, examples in a second and you'll see what I mean so how do you access the CDL because it's buried and if you don't know where it is you'll be spending hours looking for it so going right back to the very beginning when we logged on and we clicked on the little library book and then we select technical publications so you do that you choose your aircraft like you did before but this time you need to click flight manuals rather than maintenance manuals so you click on flight manuals so you've clicked on flight manuals and uh, similar to the maintenance manuals, now it takes you to the next page where you got a list of, this time, flight manuals. What we need to do is select airplane flight manual. You select that one, the top one. You select that. Okay, so you select flight manuals. <coughs> it takes you to this sort of front page. On the left-hand side of the screen, you've got a list of all the manuals within the flight manuals. What you need to do is scroll right down to the very bottom of the list where it says 08 appendices and you select that. Okay, so you click on the plus sign next to the 08 appendices folder and it opens up another load of subfolders and it's all split up into ATA chapters. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to know about static wicks, you click on communication click on the communication plus uh, sign there and it will take you to uh, and tell you how many static weeks you're allowed to have missing. What I've done here, I've opened up just by way of an example, um, chapter 32, landing gear, um, about the brush seals. So on the landing gear, as we'll see when we do the landing gear, there's some little brush seals that go around the doors and the wheels. And you might think, well, that doesn't matter if they're missing. It's only cosmetic, it's not really going to affect anything, which I suppose up to a point is true. But we go into the CDL and we think, ah, there are some real, some serious implications here. Yes, we are allowed to have them missing. It says there, you can see actually how it's laid out in a similar way to um, the MEL. So if we look at um, the left hand column, it says main landing gear, door, brush seal, item A, and just further down the bottom of the page or on the next page there's a photograph or, or a picture of what item A is and it says in the column 2 or in the remarks column it says one or both brush, brush seals may be missing provided that and then it, here's our penalties that we have to pay so we have to reduce our max takeoff weight we have to reduce our max landing weight we have to reduce our on climb weights and perhaps more importantly fuel consumption there is a penalty to play if any of these brush seals are missing there's a fuel consumption uh, penalty of plus 0.4 percent per brush seal so this really um the crew need to be aware of this right <clears throat> so these things and and it's it's not just here if you look at uh, the wings there's similar seals where the ailerons are and where the flaps are, and they all have these penalties. So it is something worth kind of uh, being aware of. Obviously, you won't find anything about a brush seal in the MEL because it's not equipment. It doesn't affect the operation of the landing gear. 
that still works absolutely fine, but we do have a penalty to pay in terms of fuel consumption and weights. So the next section I want to talk about is um, something, an area called advisory wires. Now you can access these, this information from either the flight manuals or the maintenance manuals. There's a link in both of them and they t it takes you to the same kind of manual, the same thing. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are, you can go back to the list of manuals and you'll see uh, down towards the bottom of the list it says advisory wires. You, you click on that. So advisory wires are a very useful resource of information when it comes to troubleshooting. So um, if you are troubleshooting, it's always worth taking a look in the advisory wires to see if there's been anything that Bombardier have issued to help you out with uh, troubleshooting. And it's laid out in 88 chapters, and you open up the chapter, and there will be all the advisory wires that they've um, issued. I'm going to go through an example of one in just a second on the next slide. But as you can see, if people, Bombardier, get loads and loads of information from all the operators, and they will see when they start to get spikes of components being replaced, or spikes of components that it's always no fault found. And they will then look into it and then issue advisory wires to help you with your troubleshooting. So this is just an example of one. Um, so Bombardier noticed they were getting a lot of returns of flight control computers and there was a lot of stuff coming back um, or being thrown back out again. There was no fault found. So it was obviously an issue going on. So Bombardier issued this advisory wire to help you with um, troubleshooting for the flight control system or the flight control computer system, which is the autopilot system. And so there's, they issued this advisory wire. So you can take a look at this and it help you out with your troubleshooting to help you or help reduce these no fault founds. <clears throat> um, and then um, if you follow that, it will it will hopefully reduce the no-fault founds and uh, improve your reliability. <clears throat>